this is Liz again from Augusta. Some of you asked for a little bit more of this content, so I'll just share a couple more things after dealing with thousands of customers and you find out some love you and some hate you, so just be what you are. But I thought I would share a couple things with you today. So uh, something about customer education is very important. So there's people that to them, uh, landscaping is really big and foreign let's say they're a banker or they're an opera singer and they've not, never done hard labor in their whole life uh, we had one lady one time that Mike did an estimate with and she was an opera singer and she walked around in her stiletto heels and everything through the yard and throughout their project she didn't understand a landscaping and so she would ask for this and that and it, and when that happens um, they don't know they're just you know I saw this on Pinterest can we do this and that and everything so sometimes you need to explain things to the customer and give them an education on how it works not with an attitude or anything but just because they don't know and if you were asked to go on stage and sing opera with her you wouldn't have a clue what you were doing either so it's important to not look down on them but make sure they have enough details and that they're educated for example somebody wants a, a pad that they can um, pull their trash can from their house to the road and they're asking you for drain rock well um, if you are smart and you don't want a bunch of issues in the end you're gonna tell them that drain rock is not the best product that maybe they need some packed limestone um, and if they want a dog run and then they want packed limestone then you're gonna explain to them that they probably need drain rock and it's better on their dogs paws and there's drainage for them so in, in all aspects of things that get you frustrated with the customer, sometimes if you just explain how it is going to roll and how it should roll, uh, they're comforted by the information knowing that you're the professional and you know what you're talking about. Um, well, another thing that's important is to detach. So let's say you're in the middle of the day and, and a complaint comes in and, and you think, oh no, it's gonna be just like that other time and you automatically get emotional and mad. If you just step back and, and realize that probably just one little phone call with a reasonable individual this time is just gonna fix it right up and, and there's not gonna be an issue, just try to step back and not compare it to the other times, even with the same person. Um, I, I speak to, on behalf of property managers, that sometimes a property manager, you'll find calls and you're their best person ever. You're their go-to person. They get their advice from you on all uh, landscaping and everything and all projects and anything their tenants ask. And then all of a sudden one day they call you and they're screaming and yelling and crying and Augusta has let me down and be completely unemotional but empathetic in that moment knowing that you've had a previous relationship with them that's really solid and they really like you and your company and your guys and everything and just understand that they are caught between tenants that are yelling at them to address something immediately and owners who have them on a budget and telling them they can't go over a certain amount but they're getting stuff demanded here all of that funnels in and gets dumped on you so you have to be able to have uh, situational awareness and also to detach and be able to comfort them and help the property manager resolve their problem for the tenant and for the owner uh, another thing to point out if you have a lot of uh, if you get customer complaints um, also remember when you're talking to somebody who's completely fired up that our industry is lawn care and landscape and there's nobody bleeding out on the battlefield and it's usually going to be resolvable most of what we deal with 99.9% .9 unless there's some big accident or something so just keep that in mind that just comfort the client that you can figure it out together and that it is resolvable um, another important thing is to prioritize and execute and not get overwhelmed by the minutia of what's going on at the office so that you can service your customers and when you come in in the morning you're like oh my goodness what do i do first quickly go through them and see if there's an immediate need for the day where you have to call a customer back right away and deal with a fire that you have to put out flag them different colors so that way you don't have to read through them all and just start jumping in and answering them and then you can answer any complaints or concerns right away for jobs that day. And then later on, okay, I can get to this one tonight. And there's just no emotion. You have your system down and you're just getting through it.
Um, train your team at your team meetings with different scenarios. So let's say all the guys are running into the same problem. What do we do when the customer asks for a leaf cleanup and we're only there to mow? As a team, at your team meeting, you tell them what verbiage to use and then it's standard all across the board. We're mowing the leaves that are in your grass where you'd be happy to give you a leaf cleanup estimate. Um, sometimes you do need to fire your customers and an example of that would be is when every single visit it's your minimum mow for 25 35 bucks and they call every single visit and want somebody to come back well on paid for performance there's not much money going out to you or to the crew and if somebody comes back every time your source of income is never going to be substantial always doing callbacks so We've had customers um, that I had to let them know that we could no longer service their property. And the verbiage that I used was, we can't seem to, we keep, we keep disappointing you and we can't seem to meet your needs adequately. You might need a personal gardener. And in those times, I've actually given them names of people that are like single guys or gal crew that can go out and take care of them a little better. And I mean, I had the customer call was very upset. I love you guys. I love your team. And I said, but we can't seem to make you happy. And he was very upset. And so I said, if you have projects in the future, we can do, you know, big projects. And I tried to make it very positive for the future. Some people just need a person they can call on their cell phone. And as your company grows, you just have to establish the boundaries and if they can't handle that kind of thing and they do need a, a person they can call on their cell phone day and night then help them look elsewhere and find someone you also help the small landscaper guy and you also um, retain good uh, rapport with people in the community and that way they will call you when they have their big property cleanup that you're little their one little guy can't manage and so it makes a good reciprocity all the way across the board in your community there's um, one thing that I think might be helpful for a lot of your guys as well as for you when you go for an estimate we had a client one time and he was going to have work done at his property his wife had dementia and she had always done the gardening and so he was very apprehensive about us coming because he didn't know how she would react so she was in, you know, maybe stage two or three of her dementia. And so when the guys would come, she was safe enough to still be at home, but to suddenly see people on her property and not understand what was going on, you never know what they're thinking and what's going to happen. And so we actually had, uh, we kind of prepped all the guys and we let the customer know it's, it's okay. We're going to talk to the guys how to be with her. We'll try to send the same guys, but she would be in the window and she'd be peering out at them the whole time and not knowing what was going on. So a lot of times um, when you see somebody with dementia or like you you drive up, you get out and maybe you're there to speak with the husband, but uh, somebody, whoever the customer is, has um, like a look in their eyes, like a little bit fearful. So what you wanna do is make sure you don't do a full frontal walking towards them because they feel very intimidated and they might you know back up and kind of be scared of you but if you come up to them kind of sideways your body language is sideways then it it's um less offensive and obtrusive to them you're not in their space your 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 hands are open and you're not coming you don't want to stand like this or you're just open to them so you don't know how they're ever going to react even if they're a recurring customer as they get older and their dementia increases um, you you want to just be sensitive to that and if they become a recurring customer make sure you have a point of contact with their family so your crew is with them every week and as they see them deteriorate you can communicate with their family there's so much more I could share today if you have specific questions that you'd like us to address feel free to to let us know and we'd love to help you out have a great day